Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media and welcome to the grand finale of 2021 in review with obviously what has to be the grand finale, the top albums of the year, more specifically the top 20 albums of the year. I don't know why I put a five up there, top 20 albums of the year. Uh, but just like the EP video, we actually are going to go through all of the albums that I reviewed. Uh, there was 55 of them that I reviewed. And so uh, again, quick caveat, uh, even though this is an EDM focused channel, not every album I listen to is EDM. And so I don't, sometimes I don't rate every album I listen to, uh, but I try to if I can. So uh, we've gone through 55 albums this year. So we're quickly going to run through the 55 to 20, and then we'll talk about the top 20 in more depth. Um, so pretend these are the uh, honorable mentions. They will uh, show up in order here, just on a thing, and show up with a score next to them of what I eventually gave them. Uh, so uh, let's just jump into it. 55 is my worst project of the year, Marshmallow's Shockwave. 54, Tones and I, Welcome to the Madhouse. 53, Dubs's Sleep Album. 52, Sullivan King, Loud. 51, Elefante, Heavy Glow. 50, Bunny, All New, All Different. 49, Vice Tones, Legacy. 48, The Fat Rat, Parallax. 47, Robin Schultz's Four. Uh, 46, Vichy, Californian Dreams. 45, Darius and Rotin, More Adventures, The Forever Field Trip. Sorry about that, Rare Bun. Uh, 44, Grizz, Rainbow Brain. 43, Trampa, Disrespect. 42, Sofa Sound, Stupid Boy. Uh, 41, Elenium's Fallen Embers. 40, Tasaki's uh, 019453. Uh, 39, Kashmir's Harmonica Andromeda. Sorry, a lot of people on that one. Uh, 38, Lontalius, Someone Will Be There For You. 37, Zed's Dead, Catching Z's, which is technically a mixtape, but I count mixtapes in this list, by the way. So mixtape and album, same thing. Uh, 36, Midas is Lost. 35, Shingo Nakamura's Glow. 34, Vintage and Morelli and Ariel Marin, uh, The Light. 33, Kings of Leon, When You See Yourself. 32, Rez's Spiral. 31, Son Lux, uh, Tomorrow's Three. Uh, 30, Wave Racer to Stop from Falling Off the Earth. 29, Flux Pavilions dot Wave. 28, Fishmongers, uh, under, or Fishmonger by Underscores. 27, NF's Clouds, the mixtape. 26, Tony Romero's Introspection. 25, Tritonal's Reverence. 24, Feed Me Self-Titled Album, Feed Me. 23, Coldplay, Music of the Spheres. 22, Igloo Ghost, Lili, Li Line Yon. I have no idea how to say that correctly. And 21 is Pusher, Stay at Home, Popstar. Now into the top 20. At number 20 is Zoo's Dreamland 2021. And while I think this is Zoo's actually worst project to date, it's because I actually really like Zoo. I know he's not everyone's favorite, but he does that kind of quintessential sexy house that I've talked about over and over again on my channel here and there. Uh, if you've ever been in for the live streams or the new music Monday stuff, um, <laughs> I, I actually do enjoy the sexy house genre quite a bit. And uh, this is definitely one of those. So uh, if you like house, if you like sexy songs, uh, Dreamland 2021 is for you. At 19 is Chet Faker's Hotel Surrender. I've heard his name thrown around here and there everywhere. And I was like, I never really gave it a listen, but I finally did with Hotel Surrender and I really enjoyed it. Even though I thought Oh Me Oh My, the first track of the LP was the best by far, the rest of it was still pretty fun. It had a little more pop influence than I apparently heard normally Chet Faker does, uh, but I seem to enjoy it. Um, there wasn't any too, there wasn't too many standout tracks after Oh Me Oh My, but it was still a solid kind of uh, indie, more funk style LP. At number 18 is, I, I don't even know how to say this, Phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoria is Mr. Bill's Phantasmagoria at 18. Um, this uh, album really takes you on a journey through this like exper experimental space time wormhole black hole stuff it's like very spacey and just like it's like an experiential album i mean i said that already but it's one that you kind of just put on and just like you kind of just go there and just like oh you just sit there or like you're in like a comatose state as you listen to this album uh the one thing the one gripe i'd say against this album is there's nothing really there's no singles of the album it doesn't feel like there's anything that really stands out or i would want to listen to by itself it's an album you really need to listen to top to bottom and no other way at least in my opinion Number 17 is Virtual Riot's Simulation LP. 
oh, people loved this album. And I was a fan of it, not as much as some other people were. I don't really love, especially some of the rhythm tracks on this. The more abrasive dubstep style isn't for me all the time, but I really appreciated this. And in terms of the kind of rhythm scene, I think this was a huge like milestone or like it's it's an album that we will be comparing other rhythm albums to for forever i think will be this kind of this album virtual ride simulation i know it's not pure rhythm it has a lot of other dubstep influences here and there and some electro tracks but um this is a this is a benchmark album i think for sure in that subgenre at 16 is son holo's bb you okay this is a super super long project with a lot less standout tracks than I actually wanted or expected there to be. Uh, but this album had a long cycle that just kind of came out over a couple, like I guess a two or a year and a half. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I like San Holo a lot. This is definitely his most commercial friendly or poppy approach to anything he's done before. If you think of his old Monster Cat stuff, like the Victory EP, that was like very niche future bass. And now this is very, very poppy or like dance pop music. Like I would, I wouldn't even say this is future bass. I would say this is dance pop more or electro pop more than anything. But uh, that's not to say I didn't like it. I, I really did enjoy it. Obviously it's here at number 16 and um, yeah, Son Hollow is doing great. I'd love to see him do a little bit more of the more EDM stuff, but uh, this st still good album. At 15 is Zavi to the Endless Searing Skies. Ooh, his sound design is unlike any other. His stuff is great. It's fairly, I wouldn't even say underrated, just not a lot of people know about Zavi in the first place. Um, and I'm here to give him some more exposure. The stuff is incredible. It's this very like glitchy, electro, kind of uh, all over the place chaotic sounds that he somehow manages to be melodic at the same point. Uh, he has really, really high highs and really low lows where it just goes from like almost nothing like raindrop fully into just like, <clears throat> just like all over your mind. It's like, oh my gosh, it is, it is crazy. So uh, for a, like a freshman project, this being his debut album, I, I thought it was fantastic. At 14 is Vendatas with Opened Eyes. I thought this was a fantastic project. Obviously, I'm going to say that about all these. This is obviously number 14. Uh, it has a great, it was a great fusion of house R&B sound with a like almost nostalgic homey feel. Like you put it on and just feel like, it kind of just, it, it feels like home. It feels like, I think urban is maybe even the best way to put it. It's, um, I, I am someone that relates to it. Uh, I don't know why or how exactly it, it's, it's a hard describer, but I put it on and I'm like, oh, this is kind of, this kind of feels like my childhood in one sense or another. It has that kind of hit of nostalgic while still being super modern. And I love the really deeper house tracks. Like, uh, Skin is a great example. At number 13 is Wave Dash's World Famous Tour. Uh, very similar to the Mr. Bill album. There's no really single song that I felt really stood out compared to the rest of the track list, but as a whole uh, experience listening front to back, it was fantastic. And I think this album really embodies the idea of like electronic music. It really has those kind of um, digital sounds to it that feel like it's from one of those uh, like MIDI boards, something like that. You just hit it and it's like, and like this sounds like, like electro. Like it just sounds like the actual sense of it not like the genre but like the uh, the word electro so uh, i was a big fan and uh, you should definitely listen to it at number 12 is sg lewis's times i think this album is a spiritual successor to daft punk's random access memories uh, you can tell there's a lot of influence from this album to Ram, and uh, it is, is quite obvious when it comes to who's actually featured on it, considering like even now Rogers is on here. It's got that nice kind of French house disco style to it um, that uh, works really well, especially in a more modern day, because that album came out technically nine years ago. Or no, nine years ago? It came out, whoa, it came out, wait. Wait, it came out so long ago, eight years. Whoa, my mind is going crazy. I just had the sudden realization that because Ram came out in 2013, and this is a uh, this is the modern day Ram. I would say it's obviously not as good as Daft Punk's Random Access Memory, uh, but it is uh, a nice spiritual successor. Eleven is Kanye West's Donda, the album release that took forever and was so confusing all over the place. Um, it's definitely not Kanye's best album to date, but it is still super fun. Uh, I didn't. I thought it was a little messy here and there, where it really didn't honor Donda as much as I thought it was going to, or be more of a like um, gospel album, if that makes sense. It was a it was a good mix of it being like the gospel and the rap, I think. It didn't honor Donna as much, but uh, the songs were great. I didn't think there was a ton of standout tracks, but listening to the whole thing front to back, it obviously is long uh, and messy, but uh, the tracks were really high quality, and I think they uh, this will... This, this is like a solid addition into Kanye's discography. It's not his best stuff, but um, it, it's still solid. Number 11 is Rufus DeSoul's Surrender LP. I thought this was a great kind of progressive house album. Uh, it's another one that you just kind of get to listen to front to back. Although this one does have some more kind of powerful singles in it compared to some of the 
other albums that I was talking about here. Uh, it's a great track. The sound quality and production, and it's it's all just so nice. Wrapped together in a neat bow and uh, strung together super well. Number nine, Tyler the Creator, Call Me If You Get Lost. Um, I have a lot of hope in the future of rap music if Tyler the Creator is going to put out albums like this. I don't listen to rap a whole ton nowadays, but I still do a fair amount, and this album is great. Um, I think it's better than Donda for sure, obviously, because it's higher in this list. Um, but uh, man, uh, with with all the kind of trap rap and like, uh, I want to say crap rap that's out there right now, uh, Tyler's proving that um, rap is not dead and it's not just made for commercial success. And this is, uh, this is, this is something special. Number eight is Overwork's Vessel. Uh, this thing is his sophomore LP and uh, it was just weird. It's like this um, experimental stuff that's kind of all over the place here and there and is really not your basic bread and butter album to any sense of it. Uh, this is probably the least like anything else on this whole list um, as it's like a, almost like a, it feels like a soundtrack album to some extent or a um, like journey to your a soundtrack to your life type thing. Or it's just, I don't even know how to describe it as much. It is just um, fun. It's, it's fun. It's great to listen to. Again, sound design, production quality, it is top notch. Uh, and the bridge sense combo one, two punch. Whoo, it's crisp. Number seven is Billie Eilish's happier than ever. I wasn't, um, overly impressed with Billie Eilish's first album, but this sophomore one is fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. The uh, title track off this album, it was one of my top songs of the year. You can go see my songs of the year list from a little bit ago. Um, but oh man, this was uh, this was something special. Um, there's a lot of commentary, a lot of uh, stuff on social issues here um, that I, I think were put together and strung together really well from Billie uh, and just how she conveyed such confidence and tackling big topics like um, people abusing power and pornography and it was it was great. I, I love the commentary. I love the production. Um, it's it's a great album. Number six is Silk Sonic's An Evening with Silk Sonic. And if I had one word to describe this album, you know what it is. It is sexy. This album, oh, it is so fun. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack team up for a star-studded album. I'm, I'd be shocked if you hadn't heard of it up to this point. It's been all over both pop and kind of just music industry in general. Um, it's it's given me hope in pop music again. It is so funky, so nostalgic, so fun, so sexy. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great album. Number five is Church's Screen Violence LP. It is a beautiful exploration of the kind of modern synth pop sound. Uh, I really, really liked their uh, album before this, I think is Love is Dead, uh, but I found out people didn't like it as much as I did. But uh, when this one came out, I was blown away and people were as well that like the kind of synth pop uh, indie dance kind of scene. And so uh, if you like synth pop or that that word kind of in entices you at all, I would definitely listen to this project. Um, I can't remember her, the lead name, the lead singer's name, on, but uh, from this group, vocals are top notch at the whole thing. Uh, it's such a, a clean, almost like innocent um, voice that that talks a lot about uh, also like gender norms and um, the inequality of men and women and it has a lot of great commentary just like Billie Eilish did. Number four, <laughs> the comedy album of the year, uh, Bo Burnham's Inside the Songs. Um, this may t uh, stand the test of time as the greatest comedy album of all time. Uh, this is incredible. So much commentary in here, so much uh, talk about even like mental health is one of the biggest commentary social issues that it tackles here. Um, all wrapped up in this uh, meta sense and this metaverse of, of music and uh, jokes and comedy and stand up, and it is just oh, it is there's there's I could go so on, I go on so long about just the depth of each individual individual song and why um, he says this verse or why he says this word over another word or why he pauses it. Like, it's, there's so much to unpack on this. Um, obviously, this is not the place to it, but um, uh, I, I just love it. Bo Burnham killed it. And he made songs that are actually like songable, like songs that I actually want to listen to as songs, not just comedy bits. Heading into the top three, we've got James Blake, Friends That Break Your Heart. I actually think I may, other than the top two albums that are up here, played this album potentially more than the top two albums that are coming up here. Only because it's really great to put on as background music in the house or when you're working on stuff. And it's um, not one you really need to pay close attention to, but one that you can. It allows you to go and listen to it and really dive into the meaning of what he's trying to convey in all the tracks. Um, it's kind of a mix of uh, R&B 
Uh, I would say is, I wouldn't even say a mix. It's primarily like an R&B track. kind of has little hints of EDM music in it here and there. There's in, The influences go back and forth. But uh, it is paired with just painfully sorrowful lyricism, if that even makes sense. Um, there's a lot of uh, like pain and hurt in James Blake's lyrics. And uh, it is, uh, it, it's, it's a great one that um, if you can go just listen to in the background, great. Listen to it intentionally, fantastic. And number two, what's it going to be? Which one's it going to be? Most of you know what one and two is going to be, but which one's which? Number two is going to be Porter Robinson's Nurture. I feel like I don't need to say much about this album, the electropop album for the decade. His follow-up to Divinity, which took, I guess at this point, nine, eight years. Um, it, people were saying, how are you going to follow up Divinity? How are you going to follow it up? And this album is an expression of how he couldn't follow up Divinity with the five singles exploring that idea of trying to be better and bigger than Divinity and failing time and time again. And uh, this thing is 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 great. It has um, love ballads in it as well as wall of sound crazy EDM tracks like Unfold. And so it's everywhere in between and uh, everything all at the same time. And finally, the number one album of 2021 is Tristam's With Love Until We Die or W-L-U-W-D because it's not actually spelled out, but that's beside the point. Um, this is my first and only so far on the channel 10 out of 10 album. My first 10 out of 10 I've ever given since I've done ratings uh, from 2020. Uh, but uh, wow, um, the <laughs> the words I use to describe this is cinema cinematic electro pop, and those words entice me so much. They oh, I I love it. His vocals, the production behind everything, how bright it is, how uplifting a lot of the songs are, while still having in those emotional punches here and there. Um, oh, oh, I uh, yeah, this is this is everything I loved about music, and a big reason why this channel even exists is to this album. So. Uh, that's why it's number one. And with that, that is the end. That is my top technically 20, 55 albums of 2021. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you agree, disagree? What are your top albums of the year? I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.